Hello, I'm Pastor Eric Grable of Zion Lutheran Church, and welcome to worship. On this sixth day after Pentecost, we get to hear from the Gospel of Mark once again about Jesus trying to begin ministry around the region of Capernaum and sending out his disciples to the various areas of the world. And just as those various disciples go out to other places in the world, Angie and I are going to say our goodbye for this service. Um, from here on out, that Zion will have Pastor Sherilyn Wendt, who will be the new cult pastor of this congregation as Angie and I will be moving on to other work within the Synod. And we give you thanks for joining us all these weeks. Zion will not have e-services for the foreseeable future until decisions can be made by Pastor Sherilyn on how to move forward on this particular ministry. A word of welcome to all who are visitors just for today. You will find a worship guide in the description below this video. And so for the last time, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship and take care all. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who looks upon us in compassion, forgives our sin and heals our lives. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Have mercy, O God, against you and you alone we have sinned. In your compassion, cleanse us from our sin and take away our guilt. Create in us a new heart and give us a steadfast spirit. Do not cast us away, but fill us with your Holy Spirit and restore your joy within us. Amen. As tender as parent to child, so deep is God's compassion for you. As high as heaven is above earth, so vast is God's love for you. As far as east is from west, so far God removes your sin from you, renewing your life in Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, who crowns us with mercy and love.
Let us pray. God of the covenant, in your baptism, you call us to proclaim the coming of your kingdom. Give us the courage you gave the apostles that we may faithfully witness to your love and peace in every circumstance of life. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading is from Ezekiel chapter 2. A voice said to me, O mortal, stand up on your feet and I will speak with you. And when he spoke to me, a spirit entered into me and set my feet and I heard him speaking to me. He said to me, Mortal, I am sending you to the people of Israel to be a, a nation of rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have transgressed against me this very day. The descendants are imprudent and stubborn. I am sending you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house, they shall know that there has been a prophet among them. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 123. To you I lift up my eyes, as you, uh, as you enthroned in the heavens. As the eyes of servants look to the hand of their masters, and the eyes of the maid to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look to you, O Lord, until you show us your mercy. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy. For we have had, that we have had more than enough contempt, too much of the scorn of the indolent rich, and of the derision of the proud. Our second reading is from 2 Corinthians. I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up into the third heaven, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that such a person, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. Was caught up into paradise and heard things that were not to be told, that no mortal is permitted to hear, to repeat. On behalf of such, I will boast, but on my own behalf, I will not boast except of my weakness. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that no one may think better of me than is seen in me or heard from me, even considering the exceptional character of the revelations. Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given in the flesh, a message of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for po power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weakness, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We will now prepare prepare to hear the gospel message. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came to his hometown and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this carp the carpenter, the son of Mary and the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And not are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to him, Prophets are not without honor except in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them not to take anything for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts but to wear sandals and not to, put on, and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. As my last sermon on this medium, I 
want to thank everyone who has been joining us over this time. And I have no idea what's going to be for the future of these e-services. And that's going to be the responsibility responsibility of the future pastor, pastor Sherilyn Went. And so we celebrate with Zion as they transition into that. And so in this last message, I actually want to have you look at the urgency of Jesus's message here. A lot of times we like to think that Jesus's mission started after the resurrection and after the disciples finally got out in Acts. Well, Mark doesn't think so. Instead, Mark explains that Jesus's mission and sending out the disciples was something that was actively happening while Jesus was still alive. He was taking his disciples, teaching them, and then sending them out to the towns, thus spreading his word very quickly in that very area. And while Mark is very centralized in the mission of Jesus, focusing around the area of the Sea of Galilee with his headquarters in Capernaum, Mark still has Jesus sending out people who are carrying this message, and that is why the message gets out to the further regions around ancient Palestine. Jesus's message was one of hope and one of celebration that God's kingdom was very imminent, that God's kingdom was going to be ushered in by him. And so a lot of people were excited to hear this message because they were sick of the tyrants of the Roman Empire. However, the ushering in of the kingdom of God was not necessarily one of sword and shield, but instead of a different way of living, one in which we live according to the way that we were created, to be neighbors sharing in love with one another, sharing in compassion. And Jesus wanted to get this message out as quick as possible to a point where if people, people were not to waste their time on people who did not want to hear. Too often I like to hear, or I hear people speak about missionaries who say, well, I've converted so many, so many people. Number one, the problem is, is that person is not the one who does the conversion. Jesus is the only one who can bring about transformation. However, it's also this mindset in, that, in which we go out with the sole mission of transforming or changing or converting people in this world and not going out simply to teach the ways of Jesus Christ. The ways of Jesus Christ are one are ways of neighborly love. And while we want to get caught up in speaking about believing that Jesus is the Messiah and Savior, in our theology, we have to always still remember that Jesus is the source of salvation and how Jesus makes that work is between Jesus and the other person. What we are called and said is the people of God to be disciples, to teach the ways of Jesus' life, how Jesus lived in this world, how Jesus treated the neighbor, how Jesus encourages us to look out for one another, to live in neighborly love and to teach others to live and experience this world, not out of selfish greed or desire for power, but instead, what is best for the world around us? And too often we get caught up in what is best for the self instead of what is best for all of us. This goes directly against what Jesus wants. And yes, Jesus wants us to be comfortable, he'd be healthy and all that. But yet Jesus still calls us as disciples to instead encourage people of this world to look beyond themselves, to cease being selfish to a point where if somebody is stuck in that mindset and can't get beyond it, Jesus says, move on from them. That is what it's meant from shaking out the dust from your feet and to move on from them in this text. People who are caught up in themselves are not ones that are going to want to hear what is best for the community. Because that is at the heart of what it means to be a Christian and a disciple. To experience this world and to acknowledge that this world is not just yours. That this world is something bigger and broader and meant for all of creation. And that's not just humanity either. That is everything that exists in creation. And that we are called as the people of God to encourage ways to make this world a better place to encourage people to live in love towards one another instead of building up barriers, to counteract acts of hate instead of acts of love. And interestingly, this is the most bizarre thing of this world is that we too often fight against what people love or fighting against what people's needs than actually acknowledging the neighborly needs of our, of our world. Too often, we ignore the cries of those who are in need of help. Too often, 
we ignore the realities and continue to make decisions that are more selfish than open-minded for the rest of the world. That is not the way of Christian discipleship. Christ instead calls upon ourselves to be selfless, not in a way that allows people to stomp all over us, but instead to stand up and be there for those who are without, to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, to care for the poor, to visit the imprisoned. These are all things that Christ did in his own lifetime. And we as disciples are called not to be the judges of God's love, who is worthy of God's love, but instead to spread it, that love to the world. And so if there's anything else that I can say to you before I leave, leave this medium and leave these worship services in the hands of this next pastor. It is to say, go out and proclaim the gospel. Don't just sit. Take that gospel message and share it with all corners of the world. You're called to take that message of love, to give hope where there is none, to fight against acts of hate, and to bring about a better world, not just for yourself, but for all of creation. This hymn is in All Creation Sings at number 1000. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. God of all, through the waters of baptism, you claim people of all races, ethnicities, and languages as your beloved children. Sustain the baptized and increase their faith that your gospel may be proclaimed through the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the heavens, your creating spirit animates the universe. We give you thanks for the moon and stars, for the planets and the Milky Way galaxy, and for all the mysteries of the cosmos that remain unknown to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of freedom, you have liberated us from sin and death and rescue us from the, all forms of spiritual and social and political oppression. Defend us from tyrants in our midst and deliver us from all forms of slavery or corruption. Direct our freedom for works of liberation and wholeness. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, you became vulnerable in the person of Jesus Christ in solidarity with the disempowered. Strengthen those who feel faint, give courage to those who fear, and bring wholeness to all in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of holiness, you send us out into the world to proclaim your love. We pray for your, uh, our outreach ministries. Equip us as we leave this place to witness and serve our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks that in every time and place you call forth prophets who move us towards freedom. Thank you for those who work for human rights, community organizers, and all who strive for liberty for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you now to take a moment to pause the video and share signs of God's peace with one another. Holy God, our maker and our healer, our teacher, your magnificent creation springs forth from your word. All that has life and breath praises your name. For your word that sustains the earth, we thank you, O God. We thank you, O God. You sent your, us, Jesus, your word to renew the world. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, preached your mercy, and called us to faith. For your word in our Lord Christ, we praise you, O God. We praise you, O God. Nourish us with the spirit of your word that we may grow in grace, bearing the fruits of redemption and sharing your strength and beauty with all the world. For your word in our lives, we entreat you, O God. We entreat you, O God. Accept our thanksgiving and receive our prayer, teaching us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. The sending hymn is number 989 in All Creation Sings. This is a traditional Palestinian song, and the hymnal explains that it is best sung unaccompanied, so that's what I will be doing. I will be singing in Arabic and then English. Let